Welcome everybody. Today we are going to talk about my feather practice whole cloth. This comes in black fabric or white fabric. Today we're going to quilt on the white fabric one and I'm going to end up using um, a reddish type thread just so that you can see where I'm stitching in the, in the video. So these whole cloths are great because these lines are there for now, but after you practice, and you practice as many times as you want, whether you do it with going over the same designs multiple times, or if you um, use water-soluble thread in the bobbin and stitch it once, flip it over, and spritz that back, pull that, that thread will disappear, and then you can pull the top thread out and practice a second time or a third time or however many times you want to practice. I did, I do have another uh, YouTube video on how to use the water soluble thread. So you might want to look that up too. So anyway, I thought we would go ahead and go ahead and, and stitch these out. And I'm going to start, I think, in the middle and work my way out. I might jump around to different to different feathers as I feel like um what feather is drawing my attention so just i hope you enjoy this and i hope it helps you in your free motion quilting journey with quilting feathers so i know i said i was going to start with that center wreath but i feel like if you're just starting out it might be helpful for you to start out with a basic feather so i'm going to start out with this one here and then i'll probably go over to this one here but I, if you've followed along before, you know I am a firm believer in taking my whiteboard and showing you how to do each particular design so that you can see it and draw it out first before you commit those stitches to fabric. So let's get started with that. One of the main things with a feather is remember a half of a heart, whether you're drawing it from top to bottom or bottom to top. Remember that half of a heart going up and out is really important. The other thing is, is if you've ever done a feather before and had your feather turn out like this. So here's the first one, here's the second one, here's the third one, and pretty soon it looks like you're, you have fingers that are going out from the spine of the feather. But there's a trick to getting a nice, a nice feather in there. If you do your first feather and you travel down in that spine some, get that running start to come up and make that first half of a heart. Travel down, travel back up and get that running start. See how I'm traveling down and then back up to make that running start. And the same thing goes for the other side. You're gonna go down and get that running start to get that feather to go in the direction you want it to go. Hopefully that helps somebody out there. Um, I used to do feathers like this, but now I do them like that um, and they turn out really nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you the next one too, just so you can see, cause it's the same type of a, of a feather. Okay, so I'm gonna try this one next. It's the same type of a feather, except for instead of it being a half of a heart, you are actually going and doing kind of a little bump in there or just a wiggle like that. So imagine that you have your spine and you've gone up and you've done your spine. And if you just want to do a regular spine that I'm in a regular feather at the top, that's fine too. It kind of is whatever you're comfortable with. You're going to come down and get that running start to go up and come in. And then you can also add a little stem in there which kind of gives it a little bit of oomph and a little bit more. I'm all about adding extra texture. Whoops, that one I sort of messed up a little bit, but you get the idea. I wouldn't pick that out. I would leave that in there. And then you're going to come up the other side, keeping that half of a heart idea, but just putting that little wiggle in there. So you get the idea there of how that would go. 
And by all means, when you first came up and did that first feather frond at the end, you could have done that up there too. There is no right or wrong. These are your feathers, you make them your own. Okay, we're gonna do our needle down, needle up, pull that bobbin thread up. And then we're gonna go from there. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my gloves on. I love to use these, they are machingers and they are my favorite free motion glove. All right, so here we go. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and make that spine. Now remember, as you're going, if you don't hit right on those lines, it's okay, because those lines are gonna wash away eventually. So don't worry about it. All right, here we go. else I want to say too you'll find that you like doing either going up or going down better whichever works for you feel free to do it that way um, it's I think the more you practice the better you get at doing both sides going up or down but make it easy for you and make it something you're comfortable with okay got down done the one side and now I'll start with the next side Have an option here I can stop and break my thread and move on to my next uh, feather or I can just travel down the spine personally I like how that thread build up um, works in there so I'm going to go on over and I'm going to get this next one now now on this one here and on any of these feathers these two feathers you could not not quilt that spine in first, but maybe draw it in and just follow that. You could also do one side and then the next side. Feel free to, I tend to like to go up and do one side and then work my way the other way on the other side, but that's just me. But you can bounce back. You could do a couple of feathers on this side and then bounce over to this side and do those. It's all kind of a personal preference. All right, so here goes with this one. I'm going to go ahead and do it that way so you can see how it would be if we just did it from um, one side to the next. Something else to think about is to always stop with your needle down. Um, and that way, when you go to reposition your hands, that your fabric sandwich doesn't move away from the needle.
Okay, so you see I'm going from side to side and that way I'll get it all done in one pass and then I'll just travel back down and get it, go on to the next spot or I can stop up there and break my thread. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with quilting this. So there's that one all quilted out. So the next one we're going to try is this. And basically, it's the same as this one here, except for we're putting a little stem in there. And we're adding an extra element in there. So let's go ahead and quilt that out. We got one side done, looks pretty good. And again, make sure you see, I didn't stay on the lines. I'm not worrying about it. that one so I'm going to go ahead and do this next one here it's basically just this but it's only one half of one there are times when I only use see here where it like something like this I only use half of the feather and maybe in a border or a sashing or something like that so this is just a little little chance to practice something like that there
that was pretty easy. And with this one here, what you're going to do with that one is I started it out by doing the kind of a heart. And then I traveled back down and I decided to add that little swirl in there. So again, you can always add different things in there. Don't be afraid to, to add things and make it your own. If you all find that this is helping you, I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have lots of free motion tutorials on there. And with each of my whole cloths, I will be having a, um, a YouTube tutorial to go with each one because I do have others besides this panel. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this little feather out. Um, if you're wondering what machine I'm quilting on, I am on a Handy Quilter Capri, which is their stationary long arm. It has an 18 inch throat space. So this can also be done on a domestic sewing machine in free motion mode, or it can be done on a traditional long arm. So always work and um that's just a fun way to get your feather practice in went a little wide on that but I'm not going to worry about it so this feather here is the same thing as this feather but you're just building up and back down to fill in a space because I want you to realize you can use feathers to fill in lots of different spaces um, the same thing goes with let me see where it was I saw another feather. This one over here is the same way. It is just this feather here, but just half of one. And you know, you don't have to follow exactly what's there. Feel free to change it up and add something else. So it's not, it's not that big of a deal if you decide to do something else. So let me show you this feather. This is kind of a fun feather to do. This one, let me get the whiteboard out. So this one, is kind of fun. So say you have your, your feather spine. So you can just do a hook and back. A hook, come in, but leave yourself enough room to get back out and back. Hook, back. If they touch, fine, and if they don't touch, that's fine. It's kind of up to you what you like. And then sometimes I do add kind of a hook up here, or maybe I just do like a little swirl and come back down, and then I can do the hook. So for me, coming back down is hard with this one. So I like to start this one from the bottom and work my way up to the top. See, and that's kind of fun too. There's not, um, it just makes it sort of a fun, different type of feather. Okay, let's stitch that one out. Okay, so let's get this one started.
skin. I want to point out here, right in here, I have a little wobble. But as I make my way back down and then make my way back up, I'm going to have enough backtracking in there that I don't really think that's going to show too much. that one all stitched out let's go on over and let me just do this one real quick this is that first leaf one that we did but I'm not putting the little the little line in there the little stem but I'm still traveling backwards I'm still, still traveling back to get that running start to get that nice shape on to the next one so this feather here I call it um, it's like a spiky feather is can be fun and um, there are definitely quilts that I've used this in so let me show you how that feather goes so I generally do go up and I make my first frond and I come you can come back down or you can start from the top up I just with this particular one again I tend to work better from the bottom up, but by all means, you can do it in both directions. So I'm just going to show you how I would draw it out. So if I'm going to come up and I'm going to make my first frond, maybe. And you don't you don't have to even do that. Sometimes you could just do, go ahead and draw your spine in and then or stitch it in and then you'll work your way up. So let's take that off. And I'm not really liking the top of that one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in. So I'm going to kind of do a little up, back, kind of like an S type. So you're aiming up and back. And you're still traveling to get that running start to get that nice shape. And at that point, you could even do some kind of a leaf up there. Now, again, you could do this the opposite way, coming back down. And I'm going to go ahead and do that in the drawing. I hope you notice, too, that when I'm drawing, I'm keeping my pen on the paper, on the, the dry erase board as if I it was my needle on thread. So you can see you can do it both ways, but you get a nice spiky feather like that. So let's go ahead and stitch that out. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do this from the bottom up, I think.
gonna go ahead and try and quilt them from the top down. that feather quilted out. So this next feather is basically like the very beginning feather that we did, but we're gonna use, instead of having one spine, we're gonna have two spines. So here's how that's gonna go. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna do your first spine and quilt your way down. And then you're gonna go next to that first spine and add in the second. Now this alleviates a lot of the backtracking and going over previously stitched lines. And you can leave that space open if you want, but sometimes what I like to do is I like to fill it in with pebbles. It just adds a little something to that feather. Okay, and at that point, if I, I would either break my thread there or I would travel back down one of these spines again to get back to where I wanted to go. So I'll go ahead and stitch that one out next. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and do the right side first. And this one might be really hard to stay right on the line, so don't worry about it. It's just there as guidance. It's just like a stencil. I did the one side. I'm just going to go over a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and go up and to the next side. And I still try and make it so that those top two feathers kind of go right, come right together there. Other done now I'm going to try and get those pebbles now at this point I'm not going to pay too much attention about those lines or where the, pe the drawn pebbles I'm just going to go ahead and do my own thing in there especially when it's in the smaller area the bigger area I may be okay with
So there's that one done. Remember that spiky feather that we did over here? Look at something you can do to fit into, say, uh, a triangle area because we need to fit these feathers into different spaces, right? So I'm gonna show you here how we can do that. Let me go ahead and, okay. So say you have a triangle, you're gonna come up and make a swirl up to a point and back to about there. And then you're gonna start with those spiky fronds. And you can add as many as you want to fill in the area. And then you're gonna travel in this ditch. You're gonna come over and you're gonna come up and you're gonna make the first frond there. And then you're gonna get the fronds out going this way. And there you go. So let's go ahead and stitch that one out. Okay, so here you go. I'm going to make the swirl, come back around and go up to the point, and then back around. Whoops, I missed that one. That's okay. First one there. pretty good again didn't hit on all the lines it's okay those lines are gonna go away so on this one here it is just like this one but again we're using let's call this the seam line and we're using that as your spine and we're just doing that the only thing different I did with this one was I added an echo and sometimes adding an echo can really accentuate the feather especially if you're gonna put background fill behind it. So you don't want the feather and the background fill to come right up against each other because sometimes they sort of blend in together. And if you're gonna to go to all the effort to do a feather, you really want it to stand out. So go ahead and do that echo all the way down. I'll go ahead and quilt this one out. Okay, here we go. If I were actually doing this, then now I was going to travel up here, get to somewhere where I can do that echo, and then I'm going to go ahead and echo Okay, 
and that one's all done. Okay, sometimes a feather needs to fit into a square and you don't wanna break your thread and start in the middle. So let me show you how to do this one that starts from a corner of a square and works its way in. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my square and I'm gonna start in a corner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a question mark and at the end of the question mark, I'm gonna make my first frond. And I sometimes have to stretch that pretty far back around because you're not gonna be able to fit very many in there. So you're gonna just do a few by stretching them around on that inside curve. And then you can start stretching them out. So you got one side done and now you're gonna to switch to the other side and you're just gonna reach those feather fronds out and around to fill in that square as best as you can. And then when you get up to here, you're gonna use the back of this first frond as a spine and you're gonna work your way around it. So you can fill in the whole feather and then you're going to come back all the way back around and go there and then travel on to wherever you need to get to. Okay, so I'm going to do mine upside down because I want you to be able to see it really well. But you do, if you are on a long arm, you need to learn how to practice your designs or do your designs right side up, upside down to the right and to the left. Same thing with a domestic or a stationary long arm. If you have a huge quilt in your machine, you're not gonna be able to rotate your fabric all the time. So it's good to practice those designs by doodling them in all different directions. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna do the first one. We're gonna come around and we're gonna do that first feather front. Got that first inside section done and now we'll do the outside section now more most likely i would use a bigger square for this design but there's limited space here so i fit it in where i could okay so now we're gonna do this outside we're gonna bend those feathers and stretch them out how we can get them go. 
pretty nice, huh? Okay, these feathers here are a formal feather. These are, as you can see, fit into um, a triangle. So I'm going to show you how that will work. Um, I'm going to make my triangle. And the first thing I'm going to do, especially if you can see this one over here when I start it. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with a little teardrop here. Okay. Then I'm going to come around and I'm going to swing out and come back and bump into that one. Then I'm going to travel on that same stitch line back to about right about there. And then I'm going to go out and around. So I'm going to bump back out and around, bump back out and around, bump back out and around. So every other one you're going to have a little bit of travel on. It's going to have gone that way and then that way. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll stitch both of those out for you. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to start with the first little teardrop. And then I'm going to swing it out. So we got that one done and I'll come back and we'll do this one. Now it's going to, this one's going to seem backwards, but sometimes you're going to want to do them that way. I'll turn the fabric a little bit so you can see it better. So you're going to do your first teardrop. And you're going to swing out and bump back out and around. they both are that turned out pretty good so I'm going to show you a couple more designs with formal feathers in them so that because that's what those are called formal feathers and then we'll move on the last thing I think we're going to do is that feather circle in the middle okay so this feather here this feather here and this feather here are pretty much all the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on this larger one so you can get a feel for it, and then you'll know how to do all three of them. Um, again, this is, so this is a formal feather where you are going to start out with that first frond, and then you're going to, or that first teardrop, then you're going, that's in the middle. So if you have a, Let's see, you have a, a triangle first. I should have done that first. So you're gonna bump back out around, bump back out around, bump back out around. And then at this point, I'm gonna travel back to that center spot and I'm going to do the other side. Now, a lot of people ask me, do I make sure that I have the same amount of 
of feathers on each side of that middle section. <clears throat> I don't really pay much attention to that. Um, I, it, that takes all the joy out of it. And to me, free motion quilting should be fun. All right, so let's go with this one. First, we're in the middle of the triangle. We're gonna do that first. Feather fly. Okay, now we're gonna work our way out. We're gonna go swing out. Bump. Back. Walk around. Too. I could add another bump out here, another little one. And let me take a moment and show you a couple things. So if you can see in here, there are some times I didn't stay right on the previously stitched line. So I'm using red or maroon thread. So obviously you see every little mistake that I make, but if you used a blending thread, um, a white thread in here or a really pale thread, you wouldn't notice that as much. So I really wouldn't pay any attention to it and try and fix it or anything. I would just leave it there. But I just wanted to point that out to you. All right, let's go ahead and stitch this other side. I'm gonna go ahead for your sake and keep it pointing this way so that you can see really well. Okay, here we go. that one done so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna do the I think we'll do the feather wreath and then I'll show you the half feather wreath and then we're done okay let's move on okay so let me explain to you about the feather wreath the first thing I like to do is find some kind of a circle whether it be a ruler whether it be a Tupperware lid uh, anything of the size that I want to make it and I go ahead and I draw that circle on my fabric with some um, water soluble ink that I've previously tested for sure um, what I also want to show you is a way that I like to do it too is if I have my circle drawn I also like to draw an outer circle and an inner circle these lines the dotted lines are the registration lines so that I don't go over those lines because that way it helps keep the feather all contained in an area instead of some of the feathers going out pretty far and some of them staying close together so that just helps me so let me show you how I would draw that or how to go ahead and use this. Now, that being said, this is, I have five free motion practice workbooks. Um, this is my feather one. It is called Feathers in Free Motion, Feathers Workbook. Um, this is the sample that I carry with me, but each page has a clear plastic overlay. Let's see that. 
and you follow the arrows and then you can use your dry erase marker and you can follow the arrows and get your muscle memory down. And then if you mess up and you don't like it, you can just erase it and move on. Um, it's very helpful. There's lots of different types of feathers in there, um, different kinds and styles, different shapes of feathers, step-by-step -step on how to do feathers, um, all different types of things in here. So this is always available too for you to use if you feel like you need to use that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna draw this out for you really quick. So I like to start on the middle and I tend to like to start on the right side. I feel like that's because I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make my first one, but I'm only gonna do half of it. And you'll see why in a little bit. And I'm gonna bump back out and around. Now remember, you can't fit that many inside this circle. So you need to be careful. Sometimes you need to stretch them out and around. And it might look kind of strange at first, but it will be okay, I promise. So out and around, back, and you're just stretching those feathers around as you best can. And then what's happening is when you come here, you're gonna join into that first one. So it looks like it's all, they're all laying into each other. So once I get that done, now I probably would have quilted that circle in because I do like the way it looks when that circle is quilted in. It kind of finishes it off. So then when I finish the inside, and that being said, sometimes when I'm in the inside, I might add an echo in here and maybe some pebbles or something in here. I just like the way it looks. But again, it's yours. You do how you want to do. And so when I come back out here, I'm going to do my first one going out, keeping in mind the, the boundaries I've set, back, out and around, out, back, out and around. And I'm going to keep on doing that all the way around. I'm trying not to block your view. Let me turn it a little bit for you. Okay, and so you see, you just keep on going around. And you're good to go. You keep on going. And then again, like just like the inside, you're going to make it so that when you come out, back out, you're going to join that first one and make it look like they all went into one another. So that ends up looking pretty good. And a lot of times too, I do, I really do like to echo my feather. And what I do is I usually use the width of my hopping foot as my guide to echo all the way around. So hopefully that helps you with that. Okay, let's go ahead and quilt that out. Okay, so I went ahead and I stitched in the circle to start with, and then we're gonna move on from there. So, here we go. I'm gonna do the inside first.
So I went ahead and I stitched that inside. Now I'm gonna to move to the outside. quilted out turned out pretty nice and it really does make um, a pretty design on a quilt again I would probably echo on the inside of here I'd echo on the outside of here and maybe add some pebbles or something on the inside there okay let's talk about the half feather so kind of like I mean obviously you're just chopping the feather circle or feather wreath in half but if you have a triangle, this makes a great design to fill in with here. And again, I would mark some kind of a half a circle with whatever circle you can find. And what I like to do is something for this one. I would start on this side and I would quilt in my spine going back. Then I would start the inside. And remember, you're not going to be able to fit as many fronds on in the inside. So I'm going to start with my bump back out and around bump back out and around and i'm stretching those and not getting as many really as i think i should in there and you're doing that all the way till you get to the end now you have a choice at that point you because you have to get back to the very beginning so you can either travel back up the spine you can travel in the ditch and get back to here or you could travel to where you can get in and you could do an echo to get you back to there and then go over to this side and then you would do the first front bump bump back about out and around and do that all the way around but you're extending those feather fronds up to fill in that triangle but it is a really pretty design okay so let's go ahead and stitch that one out Okay, so I went ahead and I quilted in the half circle for the arc there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and quilt the feathers in.
Okay, now to start the other side, here we go. So there you go. You can see it all stitched out. I like it. Something else that I wanted to point out on this panel is that you do have plenty of space around the sides. Think about maybe making a kind of a feather border, maybe be a full feather border, or maybe you use these lines as your seam lines and you just do a half of a feather and go all the way around, you could do that, or use it as an area to practice some other free motion quilting. It's just an opportunity to, um, to have practice on fabric, and it's not necessarily, you're not necessarily committing those stitches to your quilt, you are using it as a practice piece. So I hope you found this panel and this tutorial helpful. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. If you like these panels and have been using them, please drop a comment below. I'd love to see what everybody's doing and hear all about it. So thanks for following. Thanks for watching the tutorial and I hope it helped you. Have a great day and happy quilting.